Welcome to today's Two Simple 10 Minute webinar. Uh, today's focus is scaffolding learning with voice recordings in Purple Mash. Uh, my name's Lydia and I'm an education consultant here at Two Simple based in Melbourne and my colleague Sarah is also here. She's online managing our um, chats. So if you have any questions or comments along the way, please do just whack them in the chat um, bar and she'll get back to you as best as she can. Um, hopefully by the the end of our session, as always, you'll be have something to take away and work with your students um, straight away, whether that's remotely blended learning or face-to-face, -face, or um, whether that's just to support you at home with your children. Okay, so I'm going to jump into my Purple Mash, and here we are just on our home screen. And what I'd like to direct you to today is down here on our right-hand bottom, we've got um, the inquiry topics. And so within the inquiry topics, that's where you've got a whole heap of resources that have been pre-built to support you um, as best as possible. And what they've done is we've used the tools library, um, the blank tools, the open-ended tools to actually create those and populate those, those resources there. Um, if you want, you can just search for them. So today I'm going to be looking at um, a descriptive writing task that I want to look at and I can actually remember I think it was called Angry Waves. So I'm just going to pop that in there. And if I wanted to, I could have actually added in some additional filters here, like um, year group, um, subject, things like that. So it's actually Angry C. I got that wrong, but it's still brought it up in my search bar. So that's good. I'm just going to click on that to open it up. As always, you get the option to either launch the app straight away and get into it, or you can set it as a to-do, which is Purple Match Speak, for assigning it to your students. But I, I want to launch that today and have a good look inside. Okay, so hopefully you can see and hear that this um, writing resource actually has a video to engage our students. So they can watch that and really get... Um, into the theme of what it is we're going to be writing about today. That could, on other resources, be just an image, um, or it could just be some text, or it could be a combination, but that's what we've got for this particular resource. I'm going to click OK there, and you'll see that we've gone into our writing resource here about the angry sea. I'm just going to move those in a little bit for you. So over here we have what um, Purple Mash calls a word bin. And that's basically some prompts for your students to allow for additional scaffolding. And I'm going to um, show you some really cool features of that in just a moment. But before I do, we'll have a look at what else we can see here. We've got some clip art that the students can see. And we've also got the writing template here, which has got an image box and also a, um, a text box further down. Before I go into the word bin and showing you um, some really cool features of that, I'm going to come up to this mortar board here and click here. And what this does is this enables teacher mode. And that means that I can make any edits to this resource prior to sending it to my students. So I can really make sure that this resource targets the individual needs of my students um, because it's been created to support us as much as possible. But obviously every um, classroom is different and every student has different um, different needs that you will be targeting yourself. Okay, so now you'll see straight away the difference is I've got some icons over here. I've got some pencil icons and these are consistent right through Purple Mash. If you see the pencil there, that means that there's an option to edit. If you see that green plus, it's an option to add something. And then the red cross that's an option to delete something. And that's really important to remember because whenever you go into another resource or tool, if you see those, it means the same thing, which is handy. So straight up, our um, word bin provides us with a, um, an, a prompt that we can see straight away. So as a student, I can just glance at that and I can see there's some additional words there to get me thinking about the descriptive language that I might be using today. If I hover over those words, you can see I get an additional question to help me deeply consider what it is that I'm going to be writing about. And the nice thing is if I go one step further and pop my cursor into the text box and then go back and click that, I'll actually get a sentence starter to help me answer that question, which is really useful, particularly for those reluctant um, writers, just to get, um, get them writing, get them started, I guess. But the real power and the exciting part comes in when I click this pencil. 
and you can see here that then I can start making changes. I might wish to change um, what the students see entirely. I can change the title. I can change the tooltip, which is your hover over question that I've that I showed you earlier. Um, and you can change the um, sentence data, which is the text here. But you can see the additional option here for sound. And I've got a big red cross here because I don't have a sound um, associated with this particular prompt. I'm going to click there. And it's going to bring up our classic um, sound tool. And the, this looks the same no matter where you're working within Purple Mash. And so it's actually brought up some sound effects. And obviously that's not what we want right now. But because we have a consistency through Purple Mash, um, you might, may wish to use a sound effect in something like a game creation um, tool or something like that. But today I'm going to come down and we're going to look um, particularly closely at this record option here. So this is where I can add additional scaffolding for my students. And depending on the students I'm working with, that could be as simple as um, just reading out the words that they see to help them if they perhaps are a reluctant reader or they may struggle with the words and you want to make sure that they can actually decode the words um, to make meaning from them. Um, otherwise, it could be additional scaffolding. So you might like to take them further and perhaps remind them of a time that they've been to the beach. What did you see when you were at the beach? Were the waves angry? Were they different? Were they the same? Just to really engage them in the topic. Um, you can play that back if you wish, or you can simply select Done. And that will save that into your particular prompt there. I'm going to click OK. And what you'll notice up here next to our first prompt that we edited is a speaker sound. Um, a speaker icon and you'll notice again this it will be consistent right throughout Purple Mash. So wherever there is a sound that you or your students can listen to, you will see that nice little icon there. And if I just like reading that. out the words that they see to help them, then you'll see the, the voice prompts that I've added in there. So it's a really nice way, quick and simple, that you can add your voice um, into a writing task such as this one. Before I move on, I'm going to show you another feature that we can add to this writing template and I'm going to do that by opening up this settings cog up here. And you'll see here there's lots of different options that, that you can um, make edits to as the teacher. We've, we've got our word bin in here and we've got a clip art bin here and also what we can do here is we can um, select a checklist. So once I've ticked that, I've got the option to choose a checklist and you might choose one of the, um, the checklists that come within Purple Mash, the generic checklist. And if I click OK, you'll notice straight up here I've got this little green tick. So I can click on that and up comes a checklist. If you don't like it, again, you can make exactly the same edits as what we just did with the word bins over here. You can do the same thing by clicking on the pencil for the checklist. But before I move on, what I would like to do is actually open a checklist that I have saved. I'm going to click Browse. And I've just saved it into my work folder because I knew that I'd want to come back to it. I'll open that one. And you'll see that this is actually an idea given to us from a few of our Victorian schools that they've actually tried to include rubrics um, into the checklist function. And so it doesn't look like your traditional rubric. However, you can notice some of the features here. So, for example, this teacher has included word choices, excellent, good, just okay. Obviously, we all know with rubrics we need more information on that. Um, we need to know what is it that makes our word choices excellent, what makes them just good. And so that's where the power of your voice can come back in. So again, we click that pencil to edit, come down to the sound, and all these are going to look really similar now to is exactly the same process as what we did with the word bin. Click on record and that's where we can say I have included similes and I have included at least four adjectives in my writing. Okay, stop there, click done. And you'll see now that once I select OK, I've got that little speaker that's popped up there. So to create this rubric, the teachers actually added some instructions to explain to the students that they select one 
for each subheading. So they need to come through, listen to the description of what makes excellent word choices, what makes good word cho choices, and what makes just okay word choices. And then they need to select where they believe that they fit in um, there. So it's a wonderful way of providing feedback to you. And it's also making the learning intentions really clear to the students because that rubric is then available for them to view at any time as they're creating their writing, which is really important. Okay, and um, like I just opened one that I'd saved, this little floppy disk up here is a save icon. So once you're happy with a rubric or a checklist or um, anything that you've made along the way, do save it into your folder because that way you've then got that starting point for next time, which can be really useful. All right, so we've covered off two ways of adding voice into um, our resource here today. What I would like to do now is add a third way of making, and with a focus heavily on making that learning intention really clear. And we're going to do that by assigning this work to our students. So I'm going to come up um, to my burger menu and click share. And then I'm gonna come across to set as a to-do. And I can add in, I'm not gonna put in a very good description here today or title, because I'm conscious of the time. Um, but what you can see here is you've got that um, familiar audio icon here. So once I click here, I can actually elaborate upon that description or title and I can give my students some really clear instructions on what it is that um, I need them to focus on today and what that learning intention is. And once I'm happy with that, again, you can play or re-record, but once I'm happy, I can add that in there. And just quickly, I'll note that this is also where you can um, align your work to the curriculum. So I can come in here and come down to writing and creating text and we're going to be looking at these particular objectives and save those in there and that'll um, help with your marking as you go along as well. Okay, so I can set in the hand, um, set a hand in date, I can set a, um, a repeat function if I wish. But this is where the power comes in. So depending on what it is I actually recorded there with my voice, I can assign that to the whole class. Or I can come in here and, and know that I actually added a lot of additional instructions there because I was trying to um, provide F extra scaffolding and extra support for some of my students who perhaps needed it. So I'm going to tick those students there and assign that as a to-do. And that's been set off to those students and they will have an audio function. What I would like to do now is just to nip in to a student account, which I've logged in as Alex here. This is an example of where the student has left a comment once they've handed in their work. Their teacher has come in and replied to that comment um, with some additional um, instructions that they would like Alex to focus on, and they've actually reassigned that task to him. They've also provided an audio instruction. You can see the play button for Alex to play here and listen to. And then when Alex has handed in his work, he's actually written another comment back and he's also included some further information. And you can see there for the teacher to now listen to Alex's voice. So we're providing an opportunity for a bit of a feedback loop there, but we're also giving um, an opportunity for not only the teacher to be heard really clearly to the student and provide a clear learning intention and a clear sense of direction for the learning, but we're also giving the student that chance to provide the feedback back and to explain how he was going, how he found the task and, and what he learned along the way, which is really exciting to be able to provide that in an online forum. Um, and that can be useful whether you are working remotely, obviously, but obviously in the classroom as well, if you've got multiple students, maybe 30 students all working independently, it's a nice way that they can actually provide that feedback to you and you can provide it back to them perhaps at a time that suits rather than having to rush through your entire class and trying to see every student um, in one session, which we all know is really, really tricky. Okay, so I have shown you many ways. I've done a lot in one quick session today. So I'm going to quickly recap coming back here to our PowerPoint, and I'm going to send this to you at the conclusion of this webinar. But what we've done today is we've had a look at how we can search for the existing um, topic resources within Purple Mash. We've looked at how we can add to these using our voice, how we can insert some voice for further scaffolding and to make those learning intentions really clear. So we've looked at word bins, we've looked at checklists, we've looked at how we can then um, add even further instruction to our um, assigned work through to-dos. 
we've looked briefly at the feedback loop. And just to finish up, I want to um, quickly tell you about 2Publish and 2Publish Plus. And they're two tools that you'll find in the tool library. And basically that's where you're going to find blank um, templates so that if you do struggle to find something on a particular topic or if um, there's nothing really that's hitting the mark for you, you can come in here and there's such a wide variety. This is just a very quick snapshot of what's available. Um, you can start with a blank um, template and you can build those word bins and those checklists and use things that you've saved already along the, your journey with Purple Mash. And lastly, if we've gone too fast today, please do reach out if we can support you further at all through these links as well. Um, we thank you for coming along today and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. <laughs>